been working really hard over the last sort of about four months now to put together this release for you. Um, you've heard me talk uh, yesterday about some of our roadmap and the journey and where we're heading. Um, and hopefully through today's session, you'll get a bit of an insight into the steps we've taken in this last few months to deliver upon that. In the last release, um, we introduced summative reporting. Now, at the time, I said that it was a beta release. It was very beginnings of that feature, um, MVP, as we often call it. Um, and we wanted to then enhance that um, over the next few releases. This is our first big um, enhancement of this. Um, we've added the ability to um, now store and record those summative report runs. Um, so you can set up your report run and then save it. Uh, we've also added the ability to preview that run, so you can have a look and see. It'll pick the first student from the, the list and show you what the report will look like for that particular student. Uh, it'll show you it in the web, but you can, of course, print it to PDF and, and see what the PDF will look like as well. Um, and also, we've got the ability to clone um, a report. Um, this is really important if you've set it all up perfectly for semester one and you want to then go and do the same settings for semester two, you can just clone that last semester's report um, and run it again and download that zip file containing all of those PDFs. For those that haven't seen what the report looks like, um, it does end up generating a, a PDF report that looks a lot like that. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, it contains things like rubrics, grades, comments, um, you can configure it to have a, an overview page, a summary page with your own custom messaging. You can brand it with your own custom logos. Um, so that's the, the sort of the, the simple, I guess, summative report. For a bit of background behind this feature, we really wanted to, I guess, build something that was simple, easy. It's never going to solve all of the reporting problems in schools and schools that are really, um, you know, um, attached to building complex and involved reports. This tool is probably not going to solve the problem. But if you're really invested in, some, in sort of that formative assessment, continuous reporting, and all you want to do is generate a, a statement, a summative assessment at the summative PDF of what was in, put into Schoolbox, this is a great way to sort of shortcut a lot of the extra work required um, to generate that PDF. Of course, once you've generated that PDF, you can upload it into your SIS and store it um, in your central source of truth and have that on record. Um, and of course, these can be used and taken by the student um, to the next school or off to, to university or something like that as well. We're going to be adding in the ability to mark the curriculum and having um, curriculum points, progression points and things like that as well incorporated into this report. So it will um, address some of those primary school needs as well uh, and allow you to actually produce a statement that would um, work for the junior school as well. But that's still to come. Um, we've still got a bit of work to do on the front end for capturing that data. Um, the class pastoral um, report is available as a um, report on any class page. Um, so any class that you have uh, in the system, you'll be able to bring up a pastoral care report. Uh, it's available both on the, the tabs here, um, but also you'll find it in the, the crazy three-dot menu um, for the class page as well. Um, so from here, you're able to access a plus class pastoral report. Now we've added filters here, so you can filter this on the type of pastoral records that you're interested in, um, whether you're interested in behavioural issues, um, NCD, transitions, um, whatever information you want to bring up. You can control for severity, creator. So you might only be interested in records that you created, or you might only be interested in records that created by other teachers. Um, so you can filter to that. And in the last release, we introduced um, actions on partial records as well. And so we're continuing to incorporate that into our reporting and, and workflows of pastoral. So you can also filter on um, records that perhaps need follow-up. So you can just filter to records in your class that might need um, actions um, completed on them. Looking down through the report, I can see all the students in my class. Um, report, any student that doesn't have a partial record still appears. It's just that they don't have any um, records there. Um, I can sort by created, update, or severity. Um, and I can also drill down into more information for a particular student. So if there's a student with a, quite a lot of issues, um, we can keep going and see all of those issues for that student. Um, this is just sorted in, in timelines, so I can see all of the issues for that particular student. Um, and filtering, obviously, um, to a particular type of issue. Let's go to behaviour. 
we can then see just the students that have had behavioural issues. So great way for teachers to quickly get insights into what's going on, um, not just from what they have created or what their interactions with the student, but what other teachers are creating. Uh, and that's where I think really this sort of thing is really useful because um, you get that insight that other teachers have been putting records in for that student. It's very easy to see overviews of that. Um, all of this, by the way, is coming from that idea of notifications and how do we track all the things going on in the system. And often it's not about building more and more notifications. It's often about just making this data more presentable in a view that makes it more accessible. I just mentioned pastoral notifications um, and I just want to drill down into this a bit more detail. So with the pastoral notifications, a lot of people um, have had issues with, um, I guess, the notifications that they get sent. And this is because we made some assumptions about when you should be notified about certain pastoral uh, uh, records. And basically that assumption we made was that if you were related to the student, you should hear something about that student. Now there's lots and lots of edge cases within the school where that's not the case. You want to hear information about um, students not because you're, you're teaching the student, but perhaps because you're the head of pastoral or perhaps because you're the deputy principal or perhaps because um, you're interested in your support aid and you're interested in the adjustments that are being made on particular students. So there's a whole lot of extra use cases where you may want to be notified about things that are happening within the pastoral system that you need to set up and control. So in the um, pastoral system, you'll now find that as part of the report system, you're actually able to configure certain reports to um, notify you when new records get added to them. What this allows you to do is use the entire reports feature to create unique, unique rule sets for which you'll be notified about. And for those that have been using pastoral reports um, before, you know that there's a whole range of different filtering options that you can use to filter records. You can filter things on by student, by authors, by severity, by date range, uh, record types, actions, um, pretty much everything that you can put on a pastoral record, you can now turn into an alert for you. So you can imagine a head of house might have a report for incidents within his house, he can now program a report. Not only does he get the report, but he's going to be notified when those um, entries get added to that report, which will then bring him to the report to have a look and see what's going on. So really helping him get that insight he needs into what's going on in the pastoral system. Lots of different use cases, I'm sure, across the whole school um, for different cases where you might um, be building out these new uh, notification reports. We're looking to add individual sharing of pastoral reports so you'll be able to add individuals into a pastoral report so you might create it and then share it with one other person rather than having to go through the process of creating a pastoral group um, and we're also likely to move um, reports to be system owned um, and by what that what i mean by that is that at the moment reports belong to a user but you might build all these sophisticated reports and then that user leaves and all those reports are gone. Um, we want to change that definition so that the reports belong to the system so that they can be handed over to the next person that takes over that role um, and you can swap who owns that report or who's responsible for those particular um, types of issues within the system. So next up we have um, the ability to um, set up evidence. Um, so when awarding badges, um, the feedback that we got around badges was that you wanted to be able to capture information that related to how the student went about achieving that particular badge. You wanted evidence that the student had actually achieved um, that outcome. So now when you go to award a badge um, or set a goal, um, you'll be able to set details about how they actually achieved that. There's some quirks in this, so just to be clear, when you go to set a goal, you actually don't set any evidence because obviously there's no um, evidence created at the point of setting a goal, but you can come back to that goal and add evidence incrementally over time and then build that up. And then once you've got enough evidence, you can click the award button and that evidence becomes attached to that, that student's badge. Uh, you can also, of course, while you're awarding a badge, just put in details. 
Um, I know at the moment this is quite a simple um, editor. Uh, we will we'll build that out with more functionality, embedding videos, um, attaching other resources, images, things like that. We recognise that evidence will come in a whole range of different uh, mixed modal types. Um, this is just the beginning of, of how we capture evidence, but there'll be a lot more um, ways to capture evidence in the future as well. Um, but the important part is to capture that this is what the student has done, this is why I'm awarding this badge, this is the, the information that you need to know about how that was achieved. We've talked a lot about curriculum mapping over the last couple of days and it is a really hot topic and it is something that um, a lot of you I know are really interested in. Um, we see it as unlocking a lot of potential for a lot of different reasons. Um, but there's been some steps to get to where we need to go first. And one of the first things that we needed to do was clean up our mapping interface. Um, for a long time, the mapping interface has been fairly rudimentary at best uh, and very basic. And, and certainly the feedback that we've had from schools that have attempted to map to the, to the curriculum has been that it's been very time consuming. So we wanted to make sure that we updated that interface to make sure that it was as quick and simple and painless as possible for teachers to um, map the curriculum. I'm going to go into a course here um, and I'll just modify this course. So the curriculum codes um, input box and you have to turn curriculum mapping on to see this, um, but once it is on, you get this curriculum codes box and this box appears on uh, courses, units, uh, class pages, uh, it appears on badges, it appears on assessments, it even appears on indicators and capabilities. Um, so there are a lot of things that can be mapped to the curriculum. Uh, and the reason there's so many different things is that we want to create um, a whole range of different points by which we're um, capturing evidence of the students learning against that curriculum and ultimately be able to report back to you how the student has achieved, how they've um, demonstrated their learning um, against the curriculum. So the first step, how do we make this simpler? So we have this new browse um, area where we can click and it will pop up in a modal. We can browse into a particular area of the curriculum um, and, and go straight down into the area that I'm interested in, tick those on and select those. And that's now attached that. I'm also able to search directly into this, this box here. Um, so I can just type in literacy here and search for literacy straight up. I can also, while I'm in here, perhaps go to general capabilities. I know the things in general capabilities and filter it down to just the general capabilities as well. So lots of new ways to search, find, access, and attach to the curriculum. You can, of course, attach multiple um, areas, and we do encourage you that, you know, if a course is gonna teach multiple parts of the curriculum, that you attach all the parts. Um, so it is important to go through and link that all up. So obviously that's gonna be a huge amount of work, and I recognize that that's um, gonna be a difficult process for a lot of schools. We're going to be working on reports to show you where and when you have or haven't um, linked to the curriculum, what areas of the, the, the system might need more curriculum mapping. I understand that that's going to be an important part of getting this piece right. Um, but I also recognise that schools are already doing this activity. You're already doing your curriculum planning. You're already doing your, your curriculum sort of process. Um, so I imagine that in the future this will become part of that, that process. Schoolbox has been a, a great school portal for a long time. In fact, that's our original you know, um, manifesto was to build a school um, portal. Um, so we really wanted to create a platform that um, allowed you to um, communicate and share sort of with different user groups within the school. And this page here was rebuilt in the last release and it gives you the ability to view what groups are you know, in the school, join new groups. Um, I won't go too much over this, but it, I think it is a, an important feature. You can see what groups are available to join. Um, you can see what groups are, um, I'm all groups, so I can search through everything and find new groups, all of those sort of features. Great, great functionality. But what it exposed to us was that managing those groups was actually pretty tricky. So if I'm an admin of a group, I now have updated the manage group page. So this page has been completely rebuilt um, to 
um, allow you to quickly and easily manage the groups. Let's look at a few different case studies of things that we tried to make more efficient um, in this page. So firstly, I've got a series of Year 9 students, and so I can filter this group to Year 9, and then I can change um, the permissions for all Year 9s. So I've got bulk um, actions on those students. I can also filter to other things such as house and student name and quickly adjust their access. So much more efficient, much more um, easy to use. Um, we've also got filters, so if you want to see just who the group admins are, um, you can select just the group admins and identify those. Um, you can identify just those with write access um, in the page and just those with read. Up in the top, the add user feature, straight away we can start typing in um, the new users. Who's not in this group? Um, I should mention that this automatically excludes anyone who's already in the group. You cannot actually add them again, so you won't be able to find them. So if I had have typed someone who was already in the group, it wouldn't have found them. Um, I can add that member, change their permissions. So much faster to use, much simpler to use. So we really wanted to really bring back the power to everyone on managing the group um, area. Um, all of the same features are available, adding by group role uh, and also importing from a list. A lot of people have forgotten about this feature, but if you've got, um, say, a um, team from Clipboard or a team from your, a class list from your, your sys uh, and you want to quickly create a group, you can just copy and paste their identifiers into that um, field and it will automatically add all of those people into the group as well. So good reminder that that feature is available if you need to. All the old features are still here, so you've still got the ability to disband group um, and update group settings. Um, they've just been moved up to this little modal here. Um, for those that don't, um, aren't aware of these, um, this controls who can join uh, and also whether you force them to get notifications or not. A couple of quick wins. Um, this one actually wasn't very quick. This has taken us years to do. Um, it's, been, it's been a monumental effort, in fact. Um, so for those that aren't aware, um, about three years ago, Apple changed the way they stored photos on your phone. Um, and then when you go to upload a, an Apple photo to Schoolbox, it wouldn't um, transcode it, wouldn't thumbnail it, couldn't create image galleries from, from your um, iPhone photos. Um, so we've done a whole lot of work both in Schoolbox and upstream all through a whole lot of other libraries to make sure that they support um, this format um, and added in support for um, what they call HEIC format into um, Schoolbox. So now when you upload an image from your iPhone, it will just work. You don't need to think about it anymore. You don't need to turn on the setting. Um, I think it's uh, don't use high res or something like that in iPhones. Um, will support either or format. So that should just simplify once again. This came out of our junior school project and we found that in junior school a lot of kids were just taking photos on iPads and, and uploading them for the learning moments capture. It was just an extra thing that was getting in the way of that process and making it a bit more complicated than it needed to be. Um, so we did all the work to, to simplify that. While we were there, we also added support for lots of other formats as well. WebP is now supported, um, TIFF, BMP, a whole lot of extra formats are all supported. So um, you'll just find images just generally work um, more often, more frequently. Um, so we continue to sort of work on all of those little things that I guess make Schoolbox seem simple to use, um, but often they're very hard under the, under the hood to get them all working. Um, but, that, but that's a, a nice, um, nice easy win for you. So firstly, um, we had an issue where if you were a teacher and you received work from the students in the class, for example, you said the work's due um, this class and I want you to hand it in in class. A teacher would receive that work and take it home, might sit on their desk for a day or two, um, and then they might acknowledge that they had received it inside school box. By that point, the work was overdue and now the student was marked as having handed the work in late. 
Um, so we've tweaked the, the experience there a little bit and now it will ask and prompt the teacher to say um, whether they actually want to mark that work as submitted on time. And so it's just a tick box, it's automatically ticked, um, just identifies that you're potentially uh, acknowledging student work as on time even though um, you're acknowledging it after the due date. Of course, if the work wasn't submitted on time and you still want to um, acknowledge it, you can just not tick the box and that student will get reported as late. Um, and so if they did actually submit it late, you've still got that option to, to mark them as late. Um, so we just tweaked that a little bit just to help with that particular workflow. Um, the next one is saving an assessment to your class, uh, from, from your class to your course. And this is an interesting workflow is that when we've been working with, with teachers, we found that a lot of teachers were actually building their assessments in their class and then later coming to the realisation that this is a really good assessment and I want to use this next year. Um, this is something I want to be able to save um, and, and make use of. Um, currently the, the practice was you had to copy and paste it um, into the course. Um, now there is a button that you can press that will copy um, that assessment straight to your um, course. Now, obviously, it has to be imported from a course and built inside a course structure to begin with. We can't just save it back to any course. Um, it will only save back to the course where um, the class has been hooked up to. Um, but it does allow you to um, preserve that work that you've done in your class page. This potentially has some risks because teachers can um, obviously save work back to the course. It can also overwrite um, assessments as well. So you could potentially have a situation where a teacher says um, back something from their class and overwrites um, the official course thing. And I believe we were talking earlier about um, updating your courses um, for the new curriculum. Um, so you can imagine a situation where you've done all this work to update to the new curriculum and a teacher saves that assessment back overriding all that work you just did. So just be conscious of the fact that it can and is a little bit dangerous, um, but we think the, the benefits outweigh the, the sort of the negatives and just to take a bit of care. Of course, it has a big, big warning and notice that comes up as usual um, when these things are, are going to be a little bit destructive. It has a big warning and asks you to confirm. Um, and it actually warns you no matter what, but it has a bigger, big warning um, when, it's, <laughs> when it's going to do something destructive. So over the next um, couple of uh, weeks, we will be beta testing the release. The first stage, we will be doing a, a beta package that will then roll out to staging servers over the following two weeks. Then from there, we will then um, depending on how things go with bug reports and, and things like that, we'll go for a gold release on the 17th of October and announce that and make that available to book in um, for your upgrade. Obviously, as always, um, the staging and beta release period is your opportunity to test these things out. So I do encourage everyone to get in there and actually read one, read the release notes, um, check how this might impact your school, check if you need to make any changes to practice or policy. Um, and then go forward and test those features in your staging instance alongside your data and potentially your customizations as well. I don't think there'll be too many issues with this release. I think it's a fairly straightforward um, release. Um, it's not, um, there's not a lot of schema or data changes, um, so I think it should be a fairly straightforward one to um, roll out. Most of these are a, a sort of business processes or user experience changes. So it should be a fairly straightforward um, upgrade for most customers. Thank you.